What's up everyone, my name is Andy Park. In this video, I'll show you different ways you can share your files in Microsoft Teams. And I'll also show you how to manage file access. There are so many different ways you can share files in Teams, and there are nuances between all of them. For example, you can copy a file link and paste it into your email body, or share the link directly from Teams without ever having to open up Outlook. And depending on the method you choose, it'll impact how your recipients retrieve the file. For those of you not interested in learning all the different ways, feel free to use the timestamp below in the description and skip to the section you want. Alright, let's jump in. First, I'll show you how to get to the file link so that we can simply paste it into the email body. I'll show you three different ways to do this. Let's go to Teams and navigate to the file. Here, you see an option to copy link. This link will bring the user to this very page where they see all these files. But if you want to share a specific file, make sure to click and select the file first, then choose copy link. You can also select the file and hit the three dots or right mouse click and select copy link. Now let's go to our email and paste the link to see what that looks like. For the second method, we're going to actually open the file in the browser. Click on the share button. Then copy link. Then copy. Let's again paste the link to our email and see what this looks like. For this third and last method, let's open the file in the desktop app. Click on the share button. Click on copy link, then copy. And let's paste the link again. Alright, so why are the links all different when they're pointing to the same file? Let's take a look. Clicking on the first link will open the doc in Teams since we copied the link from Teams. Clicking on the second link will open the doc in the browser since we copied the link from the browser app. And lastly, what a surprise, this opens up in the desktop application since that's where we copy the link. So you can control how the user opens up the file by specifying the link. And this could be important. For example, if you already know the user will use their phone to view the dock, you might want to choose a browser link since they may not have the appropriate app installed. Going back to the email, no matter which link option you chose, you don't want to send these long links. You want to shorten them and give them descriptive names. So let's click on one and choose Edit Hyperlink. Then enter a descriptive name in the text to display. We'll repeat the process for the second and the third links. Now another way to do this is, before you actually paste the link to the email, click on Ctrl K, which will bring up the Insert Hyperlink dialog box. There you can name the link and paste the link address all in one spot. Now I want to show you quickly what the user would see if they are opening up the link on their phone. The first link opens up in the Teams app as expected, and the second and the third link actually opens up in the Word app. Since I have the Word application installed, even when I click on the browser link, it opens up in Word. I suppose if you didn't have the Word app installed on your iPhone, the browser link will open up in the browser. In this section, I'm going to show you how you can share the file directly from the document. Let's open up SharePoint. Select the file we want to share, 
and click on the share icon. Now we can see here that the default option is that people within the organization can edit the file. Let's click for more option. We can share with anyone, which my organization has disabled. We can share with people with existing access, or we can specify people. This can include people from the outside the organization as long as we have their email address. So let's see, if we keep the default option to share with internal organization only and try to send it to someone outside, we'll get an error. But when we change the option to specific people, we get a warning but will allow us to send. Sometimes, we might want to include a long message with the file, so typing a message here in this small area is not practical. So, we'll type in the recipient's email address, and you see we get an error indicating the email address is outside of our organization's domain. So let's go and check the option for specific people. Now when you click on the Outlook icon, it'll open up Outlook for the web with the file link attached. Now if you want to share the file while you're actually in the document, you have the same sharing options. Let me first show you on the web app. You can see that it's exactly the same. Then let's go to the desktop app. Here, the only difference is that we have an additional option to send a copy, as opposed to a link, either in the native document app or a PDF. Let's select PDF, and there you go, it's attached. Now let's see how those come through for the users. The first email is when we sent it using the embedded option, so this looks kind of nice and polished. Looks better than simply copying and pasting the link. The second email is when we sent it using the Outlook option. A little more basic. Sending a link as an attachment from email. Sometimes you just want to send a document link as an attachment and have it look like an attachment. I find that people often miss links embedded in the email body. They don't stand out as much as an attachment. Take a look at these examples. It's clear that the email on the left has an attachment versus the one on the right. For a busy person skimming through emails, it's easier to miss the embedded link. And take a look at the email inbox. The emails with attachments are clearly tagged. I can even run a filter or a search to find emails with attachments. You can't do this with embedded links. I have no idea which of these emails may have linked files. For this reason, I use this last method the most. Open a new blank email, go to Attach File, and select Browse Web Location, then select Sites. Your Team SharePoint site and document folder may appear here if you've used it recently. If so, select it and select the appropriate file to attach. Click on Share Link and you're done. Even though this looks like an attachment, it's actually a link. It'll point the user to the live document in SharePoint. But what if the team SharePoint site and folder is not listed in the recent folder? There is a way around this, but you have to do a little work. First, select any team site folder from the list. It doesn't matter which. Click on the folder address bar and delete anything that comes after the word sites. From your web browser, go to the SharePoint site then note the site name and folder. Site name always comes after sites in the address bar. Go back to your insert file dialog box of your email and type in the site name, then hit enter. You can then navigate to the appropriate folder and choose the file you want to attach. That was a bit of work, but this will make it easy for all of your email recipients. Managing user access. So here's some info about user access. Depending on the method you selected to share the file, the user may or may not be able to access the file. Here's one way you can check. In Teams, go to the folder that your file is in, then open SharePoint. Select the appropriate file and click on the info icon.
click on Manage Access. It will show you all users or groups of users who currently have access to the file. Here, you see that all the members who belong to this team site has access. Also, all the people within the organization who has this link can access the file. Lastly, it includes all the people we specified, even those who are outside the organization. So that wraps up this video, and hopefully you guys are now experts at sharing files and teams. And if you learned something here today, give this video a like. And if you're interested in learning more about Teams or other productivity tools, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks and bye now.